Hey all, Brent here with a review of a light novel this time, Boogie Pop Returns vs. Imaginator Part 1. Kind of clunky title, but that's okay. This is part of the Boogie Pop franchise, I'll put up a nice image of that now, uh, which basically is this huge thing, light novels, manga, anime, etc., all written by the same guy, uh, and centering around this character called Boogie Pop, which is that character you see there. Uh, which is basically this consciousness that, that rises up. It's basically sort of a supernatural action-adventure kind of a story, but very psychological. Um, a lot of just questions about the nature of why humans do the things they do. And the, the interesting thing here is that uh, the, the novels are all structured in basically the same way. Um, every, every novel is divided up into a couple different parts, and each part is narrated from, or told from the perspective of a different character. So um, as, as you go through, you get to see how things are unfolding from different characters' perspective. It'll go from this character for a while and that character. Uh, sometimes you'll see the same event multiple times from different characters' perspective, and that gives you more information. So the premise of this story uh, is the first of, of a two-parter. Uh, there's a new villain called Spooky Electric, awesome name, who can basically wipe uh, and alter human memories because he can uh, basically cause electrical currents to run through your brain and, and uh, alter the neurons. And uh, basically, so he can turn you into his slave. Just, you know, rewrite all your memories. You're just this, this complete slave to him. And he starts doing some unpleasant things. And Boogie Pop and others start sort of going against this. Now, the story is a bit hard to follow. And this was kind of my, my real main complaint with this one. I love the Boogie Pop stuff, but frankly... Um, there's a lot of characters in this, and I had a bit of a difficult time keeping track of who was who and what was going on, and um, granted, this is the first half of a two-parter, so I'm sure there'll be more payoff in the future, but it was just a little hard for me to, to follow, but it, it does progress naturally and logically. Uh, everything made sense as, as I watched it. The characters have very realistic relationships. This is one of Boogie Pop's strong points across all media. It's very character-focused. The characters feel realistic. They're mostly teenagers, high schoolers, and some middle schoolers dealing with lots of problems, lots of questions. A lot of times, problems they've caused themselves, as we normally do. And sometimes they do stuff that just screws up their relationships. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes there's a lot of struggle to keep those relationships going. And uh, it, it, again, it, it all seems very realistic and uh, very true to life. One thing I really appreciated here it was the, the flow of the writing and the structure of the language. When a light novel is translated into English, it can often come across as stilted. Uh, compared, uh, uh, and I don't know if that's like the original Japanese is or what, but this flows very naturally and, and very well, and, and there's less of these sort of staccato... Um, writing style, you know, I went here, I walked here, there was this thing here. Um, also, the, uh, the, the dialogue um, flows nicely. Characters have somewhat different ways of speaking, things like that. Um, in particular, there, there, there are actually two characters that are very distinctive. Uh, a guy basically falls in love with this girl um, who believes she doesn't deserve him, and they just have this very naturalistic way of speaking. Um, he's sort of halting and unsure of himself, and she's very simple. I won't get into that, no spoilers. In terms of believability, that's kind of hard because Boogie Pop is the supernatural sort of fantasy action story, or certainly supernatural story. Um, there, there's a villain called Spooky Electric that can erase your memories. But within the confines of what, the, of, of what Kohei Kodono has set up, uh, everything's consistent, nothing's ridiculously superpowered, no one shows up with a you know satellite laser cannon, anything like that. And everything just stays scaled appropriately, considering what folks can do. Uh, one character kind of tries to become a superhero, and it makes sense considering what he is capable of. I mean, he's not literally jumping over walls or anything. He just they set up different you know different scenarios and things to be able to take advantage of what happens. Um, and it, it, it works just very you know, very nicely and believably, again. Um, and Kodono does a, a really good job of working out how to make that seem, seem real. So overall, um, again, it, it's, this, it's a setup. Things don't totally flow 
in terms of you know, coming with a fully satisfying ending, because this isn't the ending. It's just the halfway mark. I have not read the second part yet. Looking forward to that. I want to let you know what my thoughts were at this point. Definitely, now that I'm done with this, especially with those two little characters, I definitely want to read the next part. Um, uh, it was definitely an enjoyable book all the way through. There was stuff to think about. There were some fun little action sequences. And just uh, overall, you know, well-written and, and worth the trouble. And hopefully part two will pay off. We'll see.